So, James Clay at Bimworld, I want to talk uh, for a minute about wheel spacers, and this is super important. I want you to pay attention. Um, it, you know, we, we do some tech tips, and some of them are so you can, you know, get faster, whatever. This one is so your wheel doesn't fly off and you don't have a problem on the racetrack. So, pretty important if you'll tune in. So, wheel spacers um, have this connecting chamfer. And uh, this is the nose of a wheel spacer, which matches or goes into a matching chamfer on a wheel. Now, the problem with this is there's no standard spec for that chamfer as far as size. It can be big, small, it kind of depends. And you know, wheel spacer manufacturers often want to add a little bit more chamfer so it, can, so it protects that snout, that, which does the hub-centric part of the wheel, this, this piece right here that the load technically sits on. Um, but then, of course, it, it gets weird because wheel guys want to, want to not have too much of a shape. So it's a, it's a battle for this little piece of real estate. So what's super critical and what we're finding failures with and wheel stud failures are, or your wheel just goes flying off, your fasteners break, the issue is that you've got an interference with that chamfer. It's interfering with the wheel. So, you know, I'm going to call the back of a wheel spacer, just because it's easy, I'm going to call the back of this wheel spacer uh, the, the representation of my surface on the back of a wheel. So I'm going to say that this is like putting a wheel on your car. And when the wheel goes on the car correctly, it hangs on the hub-centric part nicely, um, nice and tight, but then it clamps fully on the back of the, or the front of the brake disc, the brake hat. And so this is wheel spacer going on to the car. This represents the car for right now. And when I put that on and it works correctly, it is super tight. So that works. And so this is a stack of spacers. This is for our Bergsteiger project. Um, you know, like, like a lot of people, we have spacers just laying around. So, you know, we grab a bunch, we accumulate a bunch, all different specs. And again, even, even different, uh, different lots, different manufacturers, uh, but even the same manufacturer, different runs of wheel spacers can be different. So that's why you've got to do this paper test every time. So my stack of wheel spacers, you know, how, how good is it? Okay, that's nice, that's nice. That's nice, that's nice. There's no gap, no gap, no gap. All of a sudden I've got a gap. So, okay, let's look at that. Again, um, this represents the back of my wheel. I put this on my wheel spacer, which is on my car. It's no longer, it's no longer tight. It's not seating on the, the face of the spacer. It's actually seating on this chamfer. So if I look at this chamfer, and you can also often see the issue with this, this polished little, little edge, that polished edge is where this edge of a small chamfered wheel is sitting on the spacer. So instead of seating on this large flat surface, I'm seating on some portion, and probably not flat, of the edge of this chamfer. And so what happens? This thing moves around because it's not, it's not seated properly. The spacers get wallowed out, or the, the fasteners get wallowed out, and then boom, flies off on a racetrack. So you've got to do the paper test. Paper in your wheel, pinch, does it stick? If, it, if you can pull the paper out, you need a new spacer. It, you've got to do a new spacer, or you've got to modify the wheel, and you can eat back down that chamfer in the wheel and make it work. And while that's maybe not the ideal solution, again, because there is no wheel manufacturer standard, that's one that I would find acceptable, um, and especially at the racetrack. If I'm just trying to make this thing work, I realize that I've got a problem. I see that little silver ring of death. Um, I'm just going to modify my wheel, barrel grinder, get it down there. So again, doesn't matter what brand wheel you have, what brand spacer you have, when you got them, who you got them from, this should be in your arsenal. This test, and you should do it anytime you're testing a new wheel tire and spacer configuration on your BMW or I assume any car that has a hub centric spacer. So we were shooting this video and uh, we, we had this set up for you so you, we could show you what we're doing with spacers and so forth but it was easier to show you on spacers themselves instead of a wheel but we decided to take the opportunity and test our own stuff. This is why you test. So again this project we just had this stack of spacers uh, same manufacturer but different different models different tolerances so this is our front wheel and tire and on the front and i'm going to test i'm going to i'm going to show you this holding it down evenly and then also from the back side so that spacer works and this spacer and again this is the one with that witness mark so i question this thing but on this wheel and again grabbing it from the sides pressing it from the back side this spacer still works. And I can get a little side to side motion, which is fine. Um, 
this, this thing fits solidly. Now, when I go to our rear wheel, so a little bit different spec of wheel, again, I'm gonna do the same spacer test. First one gets in here, I'm gonna put my piece of paper. Again, I'm gonna hold it from the side, nice and tight. Hold it from the back. Still tight. So my other spacer, again, the one with the witness mark. So if I hold it from the side, uh, okay, it's, it doesn't hold. But if I hold it right on top, I can still get it to hold. But, but the problem is this thing is not seating and that's exactly the issue. It's not seating on the back pad of the wheel. So again, this spacer, uh, that kind of shows that it's doing its job. It certainly shows that it's doing its job if I press right over it. But when I press on the back, no, no tension whatsoever. Um, this spacer with this witness mark and paired with this wheel, same manufacturer of wheel, is going to cause a problem and we would break wheel studs if we paired those together. So measure what you got, be careful. Don't pair stuff that doesn't work together or you're gonna have a problem on the racetrack or on the street.